Hey YouTube, Vermont Prepper. What we're going to do in this video is step you through the various hookups that I created for these two 40 pound propane tanks that you see under cover, which are mounted to my M105A2 trailer. Uh, you might recall from a previous video that I showed you how I mounted these tanks to the trailer. I use stainless brackets that you see right there, as well as some treated wood. Uh, a mounting plate for the propane tanks themselves and since that video I added two cables just so that I feel comfortable going up and down the road pulling it with this M1028 dually right here. Before I went to Amazon to purchase the various lines and fittings that I used in my hookups I really wanted to think about what I'm going to run with these two tanks. I have generators and I have propane appliances. The generators I have are both dual fuel capability meaning I can run either propane or gasoline. The smaller generator is a 4000 water by Champion that's a digital hybrid inverter and the inverter allows me to run electronics because it produces a pure sine wave signal without distortion and that's what you need to run electronics without damaging them. The 12,000 water uh, Duramax is just for when I need a lot of power for whatever reason. The Duramax has a 3 8 inch fitting and the Champion has a quarter inch fitting so I had to keep that in mind when I'm designing uh, the lines. The, with regard to the propane appliances, I have a coffee pot that runs with propane, a Coleman. And I have a Mr. Heater Big Buddy heating unit that runs with propane. Don't need any electric. Uh, those have what's called a one inch fitting. And that's basically the fitting that you see uh, that you can use those little green tanks that you see in, in uh, Walmart. You just screw them on and directly and you can use those. So I wanted to use the big tanks that I have here to run both of those appliances as well as some others that I have. But I'll focus on those for this particular video. Before I get into the construction of the connections, I wanted to first discuss the criteria I had when I was designing them. It was important for me to have enough versatility so that I can quickly connect or disconnect from either the propane appliance, the generator or from the tank because I had a number of different scenarios and a number of different appliances and, and a couple different generators. So to have to screw or unscrew a propane fitting you could see how much of a hassle that would have been. Plus you have to use pipe tape or thread sealing each time you do that. Uh, quick connect fittings are also in my view and again I'm not a uh, an expert but I think they're safer especially if you connect them properly so you connect them properly you don't have to worry about a leak so that's the first thing uh, the second thing was the use of uh, single tanks and what I mean by that is I had a scenario where I was thinking okay well maybe I want to use uh, a tank for my small generator and a tank for my Mr. Buddy propane heater and I want to use them at the same time so you, you, you want the generator to maybe power up some electronics and you and it's cold outside so you want some heat so you can use each tank individually so I had to design connections for that purpose. Next connection I uh, designed was the use of dual tanks where they draw down both at the same time and this is a specific application for my small generator because I have to use my uh, regulator that came with the generator but I can only use that that was only a uh, a standard regulator it wasn't a changeover regulator where you can use it on dual tanks so I had to create a connection that went from dual tanks all the way down to the one regulator in uh, inlet so that was uh, 
that one took a lot of research to do for that and now I can use both tanks at the same time and they'll draw down at the same time but it'll give me a lot more time to to change out uh, when I'm using that smaller generator the third option was the use of an auto changeover regulator which comes with pigtails to connect to two different tanks and the regulator does all the work it basically works uh, as follows you you select one side uh, of your tanks either left or right side obviously and that side will draw down till it reaches a certain pressure and the regulator will already will uh, automatically kick over to the other side and when it does that all you have to do is select the other side of the tanks the one that it's now drawing from and you can change over the tank that you're using that that was used up in the first place and you could do this all while the generator is still running so in in this scenario maybe you're using your generator and I'm thinking the large generator in this case specifically because my old my smaller one doesn't work with the auto change regulator so using the large generator to power a house and say uh, you know you don't want your electricity to go off uh, when you're when you're in your house and you're without power to begin with and uh, might not come on for a while you want to have continuous electricity so the use of an auto change regulator does that I can switch over uh, it switches over automatically and you can change out the empty tank and the last uh, criteria was the gas shut off inside the trailer and this was important to me from a safety perspective in that let's say uh, I'm using Mr. Heater inside the trailer and something goes wrong where I need to shut off the gas. I wanted to have a shut off capability inside the trailer instead of having to go out, climb on the tongue of the trailer, and who knows, maybe it's pouring rain out or snowing or it's freezing out because you're using Mr. Heater in the first place and you have to shut off the tank from the outside, not to mention that the rest of the inside of the trailer is probably already on fire. So that was a, a important uh, set of criteria there for me to design all my connections. And now we'll go through the actual construction. Let's go through one of the easier connections first. This is the auto changeover regulator connected to two pigtails that will go with dual fuel tanks and it's going to power my 12,000 watt Duramax generator. And what I've done for all fittings and connections, I laid out the actual parts that I bought and I numbered them. Now the numbers aren't going to be in order because I had to change out a couple things as I was creating these fittings. And some fittings are used for other connections, the same fitting. So I just numbered them and just pay attention to the numbers in the description. I'm going to keep them the same and I'm going to make sections in the description for each connection that I go through. All right, so here we go. First thing, the regulator. That's number 23. And they're connected to two pigtails right there and you see that number 22 the shine star quarter inch inverted rv propane hose and you don't need to copy these down so, uh, i'm gonna provide links to everything you just follow it for right now so you understand it all right so they're connected right there on the sides it's quarter inch and it came with uh some tape for propane the yellow tape I use thread sealant there and I'm not sure if you even need thread sealant with that but I used because it's a it's kind of an inverted flare uh, but I used it because it came with tape now I don't use thread sealant on the regular flares uh, because the flare actually creates the seal but 
I figured, well, since it came with tape, I'm just going to use thread sealing because that's better. Okay. And then also, I bought a cover. And that is number 24. Specific for the 253 series you see at the end. And then I bought a bracket right here. And what that it is going to be uh, mounted on is the uh, plate that you have a big long screw that comes up. It's like a pole almost with uh, threads at the ends. And that's what tightens down the dual fuel uh, tanks. Then you And I'll put that on and show you after the uh, connection is all done so you see how it looks. All right, from the regulator, it's a 3 8 inch outlet. And what you do first is connect a 3 8 to 3 8 male pipe thread. And then that's going to go to the second connection that you see right here, which is a quick connect. So here's your 3 8 3 8 male. And this is a quick connect uh, 3 8 female to male. And that's all this number five right here. This actually comes in a kit, all right? And I broke down the kit into 5A, B, and C, with 5A being the 3 8 to 3 8 male, and 5B being the 3 8 female to male. Okay, so those are those two right there. The last part of that kit is what connects to this hose. So this hose is the Gas Pro 20-foot braided stainless propane hose. And these are both 3 8 female flares, okay? So, you, so in this case, you need a flare at one end and a 3 8 pipe fitting at the other end. But that's this connection right here. But let's go through this connection. So you have your quick connect there that goes... To this quick connect and that's the last part of five that's five uh, C right there all right and then that connects to a 3 8 inch pipe thread to a flare this is a flared fitting in here and that is number 10 this Anderson's metals uh, brass tube fitting half union 3 8 flare by 3H male pipe. Okay, that's what it looks like there. And then it goes around and then the other side is basically the same thing. You're gonna use that same pipe fitting uh, to 3 8 uh, male. So it's a number 10 right here as well. And then it's a 5C right here. So there's your 5C. And again, the same thing, number 10. Now, I will say that the end may be different on your generator, so you're going to have to figure that out. But my end, the generator has a male, like one of these sticking out that I, that I put on, and then it's going to connect to this, right? So yours might not have that. Yours is probably uh, either one of these, at the end where it's a 3 8 or it's going to be a quarter inch uh, quick connect. So you're going to have to figure out uh, what to use at your end of the generator if you're going to use that generator. If you use if you use the Duramax um, and you put one of these uh, female to male connectors at the end of it, then you can use this. If not, you're just going to have to figure it out. And I go through some other connections which do have, my other generator has the quarter inch uh, quick connect fitting. So maybe you get some ideas from that if you do have a quarter inch. All right, so that's the first connection. Here's the next connection we're gonna go over. And this is the one that will go from a single tank to my Champion 4000 watt generator. And that's the digital inverter. And this regulator with this line came with it. So you have to use that, and that uh, will connect to a you know, 20, 30, 40 pound tank directly, this connector, just by hand. It's called QCC. 
and that ends at a quarter inch quick connect male. So the generator has a quarter inch female connector that you would just connect this right into it. And you can use this directly from a tank as is this little connection directly to the generator and it'll work. Now your tank will be close to the generator, uh, too close for me. So I wanted to use an extension to have some standoff from where the generator is operating to the trailer. I didn't want the generator operating near the trailer for number one safety reasons and number two noise. All right, so I used a 20 foot extension hose and that hose is number 12 right here. So it has a quick connect hose extension, a quarter inch safety shutoff valve to male flow, full flow valve for RVs. All right, so that is this right here, this quick connect safety valve. Uh, this is in the off position. The off position is perpendicular. And you can connect and disconnect only when it's in the off position. That's the safety feature. When you're in the on position, you can't move that. So you don't accidentally disconnect your propane fitting while the propane is in use. All right, and that goes to a quarter inch quick connect fitting. Now, you can go, you could stop right there and go directly to my generator with that. But I didn't want to do that, and I'll tell you why. Because my generator, for whatever reason, the way it was designed, is that when it's operating with propane, the on-off switch that you normally have with generators does not shut off the generator when it's using propane. So I wanted a valve, a shut-off valve on the generator side. So I had to make this particular connection right here in order to get the proper uh, shutoff valve that goes to a quarter inch fitting at the end, which is the same as this right here. Okay, so let's go through this. So this uh, shutoff valve right here is part of a kit that I got, and there's four pieces in this kit. I labeled it number 15, and it's number 15A in the kit. It's A, B, C, and D. This one is number A. All right. That needs to go eventually to a 3 8 fitting right here, but you have to step it up. And the way you do that is you see this little connection right here where my nail is. That's a quarter inch male to quarter inch male pipe thread fitting, and that's part of the same kit. That is 15C, okay? Then here's the adapter that steps it up right after that. It's this one right here. And it's gonna be a quarter inch female to three eighths inch male. And that's number 16 right there. All right, see the female to three eighths inch male and it's NPT is pipe thread, okay? And then we're back to our number five uh, connector right there to quick connect. That is number 5C right here. So you're gonna have to get a few of these. And then 5C gets connected directly to this, which is part of the same kit here. And that is 5B. That's the female to male quick connect. All right, so this is a 3 8 inch side right here. And we're getting close to the end. So this next one is a 3 8 inch pipe thread to a 3 8 inch flare, okay? I don't use any thread sealant on this side. I use it on this side right here. So that is right here. It's number 10. All right, so you got your 3 8 inch male to 3 8 inch uh, male flare. Okay, so male pipe thread to male flare. 
And then at the end, I have my 3 8 inch flare to quarter inch. And that is number 11, okay? So that's the Mensi New Propane Gas Barbecue Grill Heater Appliance Quarter Inch Quick Key to hook up your low pressure RV Quick Connect. All right, so that's this particular fitting. The next fitting I'm gonna do is actually gonna connect to this and it's pretty crazy the way it connects. And I haven't tested it yet, but you'll be the first to see it along with me. So basically what I'm going to do is I want to have the ability to use my generator, my 4,000 water, with dual fuel tanks. Okay, so I mentioned in the earlier segment that this particular generator will not run with a changeover regulator. All right, it just won't run. You have to use this particular regulator with it. So basically, I have to run from dual fuel tanks to this QCC connector. And it's pretty darn crazy. I think it's one of the craziest uh, set of fittings. But I'm hoping that it'll work because I did call Champion before I did it. And they said you need to get a Y connector. So I'll go through that in the next sec segment. Bear with me on this connection. I have a method to my madness. This is the one where I'm going from dual fuel tanks to my Champion 4000 watt inverter generator. And I'm using the connection that we just made, which you see right there, the regulator. It has the QCC connection all the way over to the quarter inch fitting at the end there. So I'm using this as part of the overall connection to go from dual tanks to your generator, okay? And in this case, both tanks will draw down at the same time. It doesn't run with an auto changeover regulator. I call champion on this because I wanted to run it with the auto changeover regulator, but my particular generator is not designed for that. All right, so I had to do this. So it's going to run the tanks down uh, at the same time. But that's okay. I have monitors for them and this these two little pigtails actually have gauges on them as well. So here we go. You have your pigtails right here and they have nice little gas gauges on them. That's number 20. You get two pack right there. And at the end of these pigtails is a quarter inch nail pipe thread right here. It's connected right to it. So I have to go from this quarter inch nail pipe thread to a 3 8 inch flare. And this hose has two 3 8 inch flares, okay? And that's a 15 foot Y connector hose that ends up going from your 3 8 flares to one quarter inch quick connect, which is right here, all right? So to do that, I had to use a coupling right here, a female to female quarter inch coupling, which is 15B out of that kit, all right? From there, I used an adapter, a quarter inch male adapter pipe fitting to a 3 8 inch flare fitting. And I used thread on this side, thread sealant on this side, no thread sealant on this side. That's number 25 right here, all right? 3 8 flare, to quarter inch male pipe. All right, that's that. And the same thing on both sides. All right, both sides of the hose. And it goes down, you see your Y connection right there where it goes from two to one to a quarter inch. But then I have to go from this quarter inch fitting right here to a male QCC 
uh, fitting. And it's pretty crazy. Uh, it took me a while to figure this one out. So this first one right here, this quarter inch uh, quick connect with the valve is part of 15, right? And that is 15A right there. Then I used another part of 15. The next two fittings are part of 15 actually. So it's a quarter inch male on this side, quarter inch male on this side. That's this fitting right here. And then it goes to this coupling that we just used on the other side of the hose. And they are both part of 15. The quarter to quarter male is 15C, and the quarter to quarter female is 15B. And then this quarter inch female right here goes to this connection right here, which is a pretty nifty little connection. It goes from a quarter inch male pipe thread to a QCC, and then this will go directly into your regulator right there. And that is part of this kit and maybe you can find it by itself but I searched so darn long uh, I didn't feel like searching anymore so I just bought the freaking kit all right so that is 4b if I labeled the whole kit 4 there's two pieces to it 4b is uh, what we have right there and then that will go into your regulator like I just said and ultimately to your generator all right, so do not use this kit, this hose, without a regulator. It's, it's dangerous. Don't do it. All right, you got to have the regulator in the line, right? You don't want to go direct from your tanks to your generator. Even though it will fit, you don't want to do it. All right, here's my auto changeover regulator hooked up to both tanks. There are 40 pounders on the trailer. You see right there. And they'll be nice under cover. And I'll keep this uh, hooked up like it is unless I have to change connections. So it should be pretty simple. You just unscrew each side right there, the QCCs, and then hook up whatever you need to hook up. And then here's my uh, quick disconnect down there so I could just quickly connect or disconnect my uh, 20 foot braided line hose and I'll be able to use my Duramax 12,000 watt generator which I'm going to be testing that and will show in another segment at the storage unit and what I will say is that being at the storage unit you have a lot of echo from the building so it'll probably appear to be louder than it actually is but that generator is not so bad. Uh, for 12,000 water. Let's go through the connection that I created to run uh, my Mr. Heater Big Buddy as well as uh, a lot of other propane appliances because a lot of appliances have this one inch fitting right here that you can use those little green tanks you find in Walmart again that uh, you could screw right into it. So it's called a one inch fitting and this particular appliance, the Mr. Heater, has two sides to it. So I can run two of those little tanks there and just screw them right in. And you'll have a, a longer lasting uh, burn from uh, the two tanks. So the other thing about this particular appliance is that you have to have two tanks running if you want to use it on high. It will not run high uh, with just one tank so it'll run up to medium but not high. The other thing you have to realize about this particular unit is that and if I don't know if it's for other appliances or not but specifically for Mr. Heater this uh, big buddy or maybe even the, the, the smaller version if you don't run a regulator directly to it, you know, within line, directly to it, you have to use a filter, an oil filter. Now this particular line obviously has a regulator built in, so it lowers the pressure enough to prevent what's called oil leaching. So I guess 
when they make these uh, lines, these propane lines, there's some kind of oil in there that, that gets clogged up in Mr. Heater if the pressure isn't regulated properly. So you can run it direct without a regulator, but just keep in mind you have to have a, a filter that you can get uh, on Amazon. So I will not need a filter for this particular setup. And those filters are, you know, pretty expensive. You got to change them yearly. I mean, when I say expensive, what, $10, $10 or so, but it's $10 you can save by just making this connection once, right? All right, so here's how I set it up. So we have this line right here that uh, has a quick connect at the end, has a regulator at the beginning where you hook into the tank with the QCC adapter. And this quick connect right here is a 3 8 So that is this number seven. It's the Gas Pro 12 foot propane hose for Big Buddy Heater. And they have different models. The main thing is to get a regulator if you don't want to use uh, the filter. Into that connection, I'm going to use part of the five number five kit that's right here and we're going to use 5B that is this right here then we need an adapter to step it down to a quarter inch so I'm using a female 3 8 I'm sorry a male 3 8 to a female quarter inch all right so here that is number 16 right there you can see it quarter inch female to 3 8 inch male the male portion screws into this particular fitting and the female you screw a uh, quarter inch to quarter inch male fitting into there so that is part of this uh, number 15 kit that I have numbered and that is 15 C in this particular kit all right so you're using quarter inch to quarter inch male and then you're using the other part of the number 15 kit the quarter inch uh, quick connect with the shutoff valve and again this lever has to be in this position to connect or disconnect it that's the off position and that is number 15 a right there okay and 15 a this one goes right into it so this is a quarter inch uh, male quick connect to a 3 8 inch uh, flare all right so that's this one right here number 11 and that's the uh, propane gas grill heater appliance quarter inch quick key hookup to your low pressure RV quick connect and keep in mind this is a flared fitting at the end here so you gotta have a flare male flare going into here and then here's your one inch connection that you will screw directly into your Mr. Heater. And that is number eight that fits the bill. So number eight, you have a flare fitting on the bottom and then you have your one inch connector on the top. So that's a three eighths inch flare to one inch, inch, to one inch uh, connector and that's the one pound propane tank regulator adapter that you see right there. All right, so that's basically the connection for the Mr. Heater or any other appliance. It's pretty versatile. This is probably one of the more versatile connections that we've made. I would say that you could do this for a grill. In some cases, uh, I'll be able to use my coffee pot with this. So I don't have to use those throwaway uh, tanks those one pounders one other note is that you're able to get those one pounders uh, refillable 
uh, a refillable type. Uh, you just got to search it online, but it's really not safe. I know a lot of people refill those tanks and they do it non-stop, but the walls of those particular tanks are very thin, so it's really not the best practice to refill those tanks. I know you want to save money, but the best option, for me at least, safety-wise, is to get an actual refillable one-pound tank. And you can find them online. I got three of them with a stand to uh, use a 20-pound tank so that you can refill it, and it comes with an adapter. I got three of them, or actually four of them, uh, plus the stand for about a hundred bucks. I think it's a hundred dollars is well worth your safety because those little tanks, uh, I've seen videos and who knows, you know, if they're true or not, but one video showed one of those tanks exploding inside of a, uh, inside of a, uh, an RV. Somebody happened to catch it on YouTube. So who the heck knows if it was true or not, but it's enough for me because it's number one. I think it's it's not legal to do to fill those those uh, one pounders, but number two, it's it probably makes sense not to do it because the walls are thinner than a regular refillable tank. The first test that we're going to do for my smaller generator, the four thousand watt Champion, we're going to do the one where it goes from a single tank directly to the generator. And then we'll do the uh, double tank. I have that sort of on deck right there with the associated line that I'm going to use to connect there. So let me go over the generator a little bit. So Champion model uh, 100574. It's a 4,000 watt starting power for gasoline and 3,600 for propane. And right here you see the propane connector right here this is a quarter inch right there all right and then I have my quarter inch that goes in there we have a uh, 30 amp outlet and that's an RV connection and then we have some normal 120 volt outlets that you would plug like you would into a wall outlet and also a cigarette lighter adapter 12 volt DC power uh, I think it has around a two or three gallon tank I think it's a two gallon two point something if I'm not mistaken don't quote me uh, but again this is one you can use for electronics and the only downside that I see to this generator is it has a pull start and that's a very small downside uh, for me it's not that big of a deal uh, the one that is I think a little bit smaller than this is a is a push button start and I guess if you don't like pulling the uh, to start it then you get the push button one but it's it's double the price uh, it's it's a lot more expensive so for me it really didn't matter and I and I get some extra wattage out of it as well for pull starting so not a big deal I think it was a great deal I'll post some links for that all right so let's get this thing going all right so we are working pretty good and you can see it's a pretty quiet generator I'm standing probably 10 foot from it not that uh, noisy at all and it works just fine it works no problem at all so again, we have the regulator directly into the tank, going through its quick connect, and there's the extension line going into the generator. Now what I have here is uh, what I call my propane sniffer. So I'm going to sniff for leaks, and the way this thing works is you turn it on, it warms up at about 10 minutes, or 10 minutes, 10 seconds, and then you just see this knob right here you just increase it a little bit until you hear a sound and then you just back it off and then you just put your probe right there right directly to the connections I 
don't see any leaks. No leaks there. So successful test, successful. All right, we're getting ready to simulate the uh, two 40 pound tanks. I'm using two 20 pounders because I don't want to mess with my 40 pounders, which are nice and full. I have the pigtails hooked up that go through the uh, Y fitting right there. And it goes to the single regulator that came with the generator out all the way up to the generator. So basically we're just connecting this line right here as an extension from two tanks to this regulator that came with the generator. And then that will verify or not verify that this connection is going to work with dual tanks. As you can see and hear, the generator is working with dual tanks. It was a pretty crazy contraption there, but it works. And uh, I checked the leaks. There are no leaks. So I can shut it off at any number of points, right? I can shut it off from the tank. I can shut it off before the regulator. After the regulator. And at the generator. So one of the things I wanted to show you about this generator is how the start button does not stop the generator while it's using propane. So I'm going to flip it. See that? It didn't, it didn't stop the generator with using propane. So that's why I have a cutoff valve right at the generator there so that I could shut it off. That makes things nice and easy to just shut her right off. All right, so we have success with the generator, the smaller one at least. And I don't anticipate any problems with the larger generator. And we'll go through Mr. Heater as well as the 12,000 watt uh, generator. We'll test them both. Here's the Mr. Heater hookup. I have it connected actually to the Big Buddy. There's our hose with all of the various connections. I use the thread sealant on the non-flared ends and I have it loosely screwed in there. Uh, that's where the one pound tank usually goes. Now I can connect a 20, 40 pound tank to it with no problem. Uh, just with a nice quick connect right there. From the regulator and best part about this is right here where you can shut it off so if something happens you can shut it off from the inside which is great and it just cuts everything off and this particular fitting right here you have to have the lever in the off position to connect or disconnect like if you if you have it in the on position you can't pull this down to disconnect it so you have to have it in the off position and you see how easy it comes off so not a bad setup I'm happy with it here's my mr. heater hooked up I'll show you the uh, direct mount there it is right there and you see it has the fuel shut off and I could probably put it on the other side for easier access but uh, it's right on there for right now and I could disconnect it right at that fuel shut off connection and leave that last connection in where I don't have to unscrew it and screw it in if I keep it in the trailer here. We have it hooked up to the 20 pounder just like I did the generator and right here this port right here uh, is where I will run my propane line into from the outside of the trailer from the front of it. So it's pretty convenient. The military did one on each side and I wanted to use one for an AC vent but it's really not gonna 
uh, be large enough. It's a little bit small, but that's okay. I'll do another one or maybe I'll do a mini split. Who knows? In any event, on medium, uh, it runs fine. Uh, when you try and put it on high, it does not like it and it shuts down. And I'm thinking it's because you have to have both sides hooked up. And that's fine. I mean, medium's, medium's pretty good if I really needed the heat. Uh, and I'll have this fan blowing, and this is a small uh, trailer for this heater. So I, I'm thinking that medium should be fine in most cases. Uh, but in the event that I need the high, I could either probably hook up another line uh, and use dual tanks, or I can just run two one-pounders onto it. So no big deal either way. Uh, I like it in that location, I think. And who knows, maybe I'll rearrange it at some point, but for right now, it's pretty good. It doesn't seem to be heating up the uh, the roof all that much. So that's a good thing. And I'm going to put some flame retardant material there anyways. So that concludes the Mr. Heater portion of it. The last thing I'll do is I'll connect the uh, proper fitting to the uh, dual tank line that I made where I got to make it a quarter inch a little bit of a hassle but uh, I got to order some parts I don't I don't have them all but I'll get it done and I'll uh, make sure that I have it all linked up and uh, easy for everybody else I almost forgot I wanted to actually test the shutoff valve to make sure that it works properly so I moved the line from the right side to the left side here where it's easier to reach say if you're uh, in a sleeping bag right there you could easily reach it right there on the left side instead of having to reach over on the right at night right so you have to maneuver that lever that black lever clockwise so let's do that and see what happens All right, it shut off as it should. We'll shut this off right here, and then we'll move it back. So it works, it works exactly how it should. That's a nice safety feature to have in there. Uh, I would recommend that for everybody actually. And you know, I just wanna kinda hedge myself a bit. I'm not an expert, but uh, to me, uh, this gives me a sense of uh, comfort that I can shut this off from the inside rather than having to run outside and do it. I'm going to belabor the issue I was having earlier about the heater not operating on high with only one tank. It was bugging me. I like things to work properly. So I went out and I bought another tank because I suspected, well, you need both tanks just like you do for one pounders. You need two 20 pounders if you're going to want to put it on high. And that is the case, but uh, I was a little unnerved when I hooked it up originally in the trailer right here. <clears throat> in that little corner. And I had it put on high, and the heater kept shutting off after about a minute. And I tried it three times, and the same thing, shut off. So basically, uh, thought about it a little bit, and I remembered that there's a low... Uh, oxygen sensor on the heater that when it detects low oxygen it shuts off it's a safety measure in case you're you're with it uh, inside indoors and you have no uh, oxygen it'll shut off because obviously this uses oxygen so I took it outside and lo and behold that exactly had to be the problem I mean it's been running now for 15 minutes on high uh, even with a little breeze here it didn't blow it out so I'm quite certain that that was the issue that it needed some circulation so maybe I got to keep a port open and maybe I'll test that in the future but uh, not right now it works as designed as as I want it to and now I have an extra tank so if I want to run something else I have a, uh, a Coleman propane coffee maker that I could probably use this tank for it has the same fitting 
So I don't need both tanks from Mr. Heater, but uh, nice to have just in case. Here's the test of my Duramax hybrid generator, the 12,000 watt whole house generator. And I have it hooked up right now to the Marshall Excelsior auto changeover regulator using two 20 pound tanks for demonstration purposes. But keep in mind, I could probably use uh, two 100 pounders or two 40 pounders that I have on my trailer. So here's the uh, hookup. It's through a uh, 20 foot stainless line. regulator with the pigtails that are hooked up to the two 20 pound tanks. It's not a quiet generator, but I am in a, uh, a storage unit area and not getting some echo off the building. But for a 12,000 watt, it's not so bad. But uh, at least I had it hooked up the way I want it to, and it's running the way I want it to. I had to maybe adjust the choke just a little bit to where I opened it up a little bit more. Uh, with the single line, you don't have to do that. But you never start it with, with the choke on with propane, but I had to keep it open for it to uh, run smoothly, which is fine. That works, it works great. I'm getting the voltage that I need to get. All right, so I just wanted to summarize everything. We hooked up the 40 pound propane tanks and we were able to get a pretty versatile setup with just about any kind of propane appliance you like, as well as two different style generators. Uh, one using an auto changeover regulator and one where we can just do either just single or from dual tanks where they both draw at the same time so I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching I know it was long but I wanted to make it as detailed as possible because I have another propane video which I'll link to this description which goes over my setup for a hundred pound uh, tank directly to my 12,000 pound Duramax and that seems to get a lot of a lot of hits so uh, you guys seem to like propane videos so I'm going to continue doing them and as I hook up different things I'll throw up a video real quick appreciate it as always everyone keep prepping Vermont Prepper out take care